So it ranges from kind of frontline activism through to people who see themselves as advocates, you know, for a particular group, are very involved with some kind of NGO or community-based organization, to people who feel like, well, their work by kind of taking, you know, looking at these things through a critical lens, by being, by bringing questions of power and inequality and so forth to the forefront in thinking through questions, that that itself is a kind of political move. I think what they all share is that most of us are looking at, are using the, um, the methodological and theoretical tools of anthropology to think about questions that kind of um, matter in the world, that are, are involved in some kind of issue of inequality or oppression or marginalization in the world, be that here at home in the United States, be that in other sites in the world. The main legacy of anthropology um, is not necessarily changing the world, but is ethnography. And that's what we do. Uh, we have you know, lots of different kinds of theories that we put forward. Uh, these come and go as time goes on. What was popular when I was a graduate student, uh, stru French structuralism, is no longer that much followed today. So, but what stays is ethnography, telling people stories, uh, describing people in their particular locale, describing um, you know, how they live, how they talk, their, their conflicts, their passions, uh, their lives, right? And, and if it is well done, that, that's the sort of thing that has staying power. It's a text, I like to say, that will re remain open to the world. In, in telling these kinds of stories uh, from an ethnographic perspective, uh, sheds a lot more light on questions of well-being because it's nuanced, it's detailed, uh, it can be, sometimes the stories can be profound. They can implicate profound issues and philosophical issues. Anthropology should be studying the urgent social problems of our time. Um, and it, and it, it, for me, that's what justifies taking up people's time and, um, and, um, and getting paid for it. <laughs> I always have to wake up and pinch myself. I, they're paying me to do ethnography? This is just crazy. Um, uh, and so it's a way that, then of, um, of being able to bring to a wider audience um, the invisible suffering that exists all over the world, especially among the traditional peoples that anthropology you know, traditionally studied. Anthropology is not innocent. We work with people, anthropologists work with people, study people often on the margins of society, um, often poor, vulnerable, rightless, um, indigenous, or in various ways um, oppressed or subordinated within larger social structures. Um, from my point of view, from a, I think an engaged or an activist point of view, to just treat those people, those communities as laboratories and to take information out of them in order to produce academic knowledge is not a legitimate practice in the 21st century. By engaged or activist work, I mean an anthropology that doesn't just produce academic knowledge, but tries to uh, in some way positively impact uh, the, the conditions that it is studying. To me, the world is lost without this discipline because it really is like one of the main avenues through which we can discuss difference in the world, like in a way that is substantive, right? Um, and not just to be like a bullet point and then it's like, oh, it's, 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 no. Really do deep hanging out and deep work. More broadly, what, what role do you think anthropology does or should play in studying um, a vast network of people such as the internet? I mean, it's, it's massive. Well, I think anthropology has a really important role to play and I hope that in the future, you know, we catch up. I think over the last couple of years, there have been a lot of anthropologists who have been more active in considering digital media a viable area for study. And when I began my project in 2006, people thought it was absolutely crazy. And, you know, and they would say things like, well, what does the internet have to do with politics? Or that's just something people in the West use. And then around 2009, with what was happening in Iran and especially um, in 2011 in the Arab world people were like whoa you know social media is important the internet is important and they began to understand why I was um, looking at what I was doing I think one thing that um, anthropology can do now that's invaluable is kind of counter this overwhelming emphasis on quantitative analysis of online media people look for things like how often is a keyword repeated how many users are on a particular site but they don't look at what they're talking about they don't analyze the conversation they take a kind of 
out of its context. And I mean, and that's what anthropology is about. You know, they're basically doing the kind of armchair anthropology, these sort of superficial analyses of culture that, you know, anthropologists have been working against um, for decades. And so I think there's a real opportunity for anthropologists to kind of um, embed themselves in these online communities over a long period of time, really get to know the participants, speak to them directly, interview them about the stuff they're writing, you know, acknowledge that, you know, these two, these online and offline spaces work together. There's not necessarily, you know, this, this separation, this digital, um, digital dualism, you know, I think I've, refer I've heard it referred to, um, that people have. And so I, I think there's just a wealth of possibilities um, for anthropologists who are willing to do this. I don't know, the role of anthropology, it's a big question. I think it really depends on what you think anthropology is. Is anthropology a methodology? Is it a body of knowledge? Is it uh, a science? What is it, is it a you? political platform? <laughs> because the, the way in which you answer that question mm -hmm. uh, is going to determine to some degree what you think the role of anthropology is. And in my view, to answer your question, I think anthropology is a science. Um, it is the study of man. It should be objective. The researcher should, to the greatest degree possible, be detached from the object of study and capable of reporting what they're seeing um, in a way that sheds some light on how people live their lives. What do you think the key um, asset of anthropology has been uh, in, in terms of the human terrain system, or in general, uh, working with, with the military? I mean, I think uh, what makes anthropology interesting and valuable, both in a kind of operational military way and also from a broader strategic or policy perspective, is that um, anthropologists, unlike political scientists, especially people who do international relations, are not focused on the state. They're focused on the local conditions of the people who live in a particular place. So it's... Um, it's a different kind of perspective. It's from a view from the ground up instead of a view from the top down. Come back to public anthropology as sort of three main tenets of it. Accountability, transparency, and doing good. Could you just talk about those in right. a little more? Okay, let's take transparency. Transparency, by the way, I mean is this uncovering, this critical pedagogy, or this idea of really opening up to the public what is going on. Um, Justice, Supreme Court Justice Brandeis famously said, sunlight is the best of disinfectants. He was a lawyer fighting these capitalist bankers in the early 1900s. And he was saying to get these bankers to behave, you had to bring their nefarious ways out to the public. In the idea in a democracy, you need to really open up with people's behavior and get them to be more moral by making it more public. More public usually means more moral. Okay. That's transparency. Accountability is that, yes, we have accountability. Um, in some ways, we get paid by universities. We get funds from taxpayers, like you or me or you. And it seems to me that you should really be the focus of the discipline, should not be in publications but on trying to produce benefits for others, not just yourself. I actually think I would be crazy without anthropology. <laughs> um, because it allowed me to understand things both personally and socially. Mm -hmm. So how I understand personal relationships is now social. It's, you know, and that's really a significant thing to realize, right? That it's not all about you. <laughs> You're part of a broader social body. Um, so I consider anthropology to be one of the most important things in the world and in my world, and which is one of the reasons that I keep doing it.